Last week, I went an amazing 11-3-1 in my straight-up picks. Can I do it again? We're about to find out. You're watching the MJ Take on Sports Fan Entertainment. Hello and welcome to the MJ Take on Sports Fan Entertainment. Time for NFL Week 8 Picks and Predictions. And as you can tell, I'm on a different camera today because my camera got... Let, let's say injured, you know, it's week to week, I will get it fixed as soon as possible, but until then, unfortunately, I have to use this webcam, and the quality, the video quality isn't bad, but the audio quality is pretty bad, so make sure to turn up your volume. Now, if you didn't hear me before, let me say it again. Last week, I went an impressive 11-3-1, and, and really, I believe, solidified myself as a pretty good expert on here when it comes to picks. So my picks have been, I'd say, average up until last week. But last week, I absolutely killed it. I hope to continue such momentum. See, when I have more evidence, when I have more things to look at, you know, more evidence, the season continues, I get better and better, baby. And you're seeing that. Let's talk about the SFE Picks Challenge, and then we will get into the picks. I'm currently 59th in a pool of 500. Uh, currently in first place yet again is the Goff Chides, who has 74 total points. He is running away with this thing. And even in a week where I went 11-3-1, this man went 12-2-1. Well, obviously, this guy knows what he's doing. That's just the damn truth. In second place, five points behind the Goff Chides. It's Chase Lab, Dark Knight, Daniel CM52, and Publix Enemy 5. So I have a lot of catching up to do, but I think I can do it because, again, I have a lot of momentum. Now, let me tell you, man, this upcoming week of picks is hell, at least to me. Because essentially what we have is we have a bunch of road teams that are better than the team they're going to face, but not by much. And that is so dangerous, man, because that little that little important factor that a lot of people don't look at going on the road to a team that is slightly worse than you, man, it's so dangerous. It's so 50-50, and that is the case for, I believe, six or seven of the games that we are looking at. Let's start with tonight's game, the Thursday night football game between my Tennessee Titans and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Look. Some Titans fans can believe that I'm not a great Titans fan because I don't pick them to win every week. Shut up. I've gotten the last five Titans game picked correctly. Why? Because I know what I'm talking about. Because I'm able to look at this team, but we know everything about this team. You know when they're going to lose and when they're going to win. And tonight, this team is going to win. They lost last week against Indianapolis. I tried to warn you. You didn't want to believe me. Listen to me now. They lost last week against the Colts. They always lose to the Colts. However, they always beat the Jaguars once. And coming off of that close loss, the Titans are a better team than the Jaguars this season. I don't think it's very close. The Jaguars stink. And this team stinks. They got blown out against the Oakland Raiders. They barely beat the Bears. And they beat the Colts six hours down the road in London. Okay, I don't care about the Jags. They stink. The Titans are going to get it done on national television. Good for them. Move on to the Sunday games. We have a London game. And we have the Washington Redskins going to the Cincinnati Bengals. But, you know, this is a neutral field. And I'm absolutely shocked at how many people are picking the Cincinnati Bengals to win this football game. Currently on ESPN Pigskin Pick'em, it is a 75% of people picking the Bengals. Why? I think the Redskins have proven to be the better team this year. They're able to run the football pretty effectively. Matt Jones had a number of 100-yard games. Kirk Cousins, yeah, he started poorly, but he's been playing well lately, and he led his team down the field for what should have been a game-winning drive. I think the Redskins are playing well. And the Bengals, they played well last week, but against the Browns. They played well the week before that or two weeks before that, but that was against the Dolphins. They played well week one. It's the Jets. They haven't beaten good teams. This is a good team they're facing here. I'm not trusting them to defeat this team. Now, whenever you go to London, some strange things happen. But wait a minute, guys. 
I think the Redskins are a better team. And if you think about it, I think you'll agree. I'm picking the Redskins to win this game. We move on to the New England Patriots against the Buffalo Bills. And, you know, again, I understand that the Bills beat the Patriots earlier in the season. I don't care. The Patriots are a better team. Tom Brady is playing out of his 39-year-old mind and body and spirit, I might add. And he's playing absolutely fantastic. There is no way you can pick against this team right now. Maybe the Bills make it close, but I don't think they do that even. I like the Patriots to win this game, especially if LaShawn McCoy is out and is looking more and more like LaShawn McCoy will be out. Let's move on to the New York Jets at the Cleveland Browns, and this is what I'm talking about. Yes, the New York Jets are slightly better than the Cleveland Browns, but are they much better? No, and this is dangerous, guys. Cleveland is going to win a game this year, and I think this is going to be the game. You know, one of the games. Maybe they'll win two or three. For a couple of reasons. Number one, yes, the Browns are all in seven. Five of those seven losses have been on the road. They've only lost twice at home. Both of the losses were actually pretty close. One was to the Baltimore Ravens. The other one was to the New England Patriots. But again, that's the New England Patriots. The Cleveland Browns have been respectable week to week. The Jets, some weeks they can get absolutely blown out. They were embarrassed by the Steelers. They were embarrassed by the Arizona Cardinals. Cleveland Browns. I like them to win this game here. Josh McCown looks to be the starting quarterback this week. I like him the most of all their stupid quarterbacks. I like him the most. I think Terrell Pryor is going to make some plays against Darrell Revis. Use his speed to get open down the field. They're going to get some plays. They're going to run the ball a little bit here, there. And Ryan Fitzpatrick will yet again prove to be Ryan Fitzpatrick. I like the Cleveland Browns. And this is such a dangerous statement to make. But I like the Cleveland Browns to win a football game to win this football game against the New York Jets. Hopefully, I will not regret it, although I'm sure I probably will. Let's move on to the next game, Detroit Lions at the Houston Texans. And again, I'm going away from the consensus. You know, a lot of people want to pick Detroit, and I get it. They won three straight games, okay? And I didn't pick them to win the first two of those games. I rode the bandwagon on the third one, and I was right. Good. However, it's time for a little bit of a letdown. It's time for a loss. They're due for a loss. And at Houston, I know people want to hate Houston. See, there's always a little bit of fallback when it comes to Houston. They lose these games, and then people want to say, okay, they're suck now. Get ready for them to suck. I'm going to pick them to lose the next week, and then you're wrong. We saw it against the Patriots. We saw it against the Vikings. We saw it against the Denver Broncos. They're not good against good teams, but against teams like the Detroit Lions, against average team, mediocre teams, teams that are in the middle or the road, they're pretty good. And I think they're going to win. Lamar Miller, I expect him to do well. The Detroit Lions giving up 4.6 yards per carry. They're one of the worst run defenses in the league. I think they proved to be that. I think they give the Houston Texans yet again. And they win that they need coming after a loss. I like the Texans to win, guys. I really do. Let's move on to the Kansas City Chiefs at the Indianapolis Colts. And I actually wanted to pick the Colts here. Initially, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go against the brain yet again. However, I just couldn't do it. Okay, the Colts can't protect Andrew Luck. The Kansas City Chiefs are getting turnovers. They're getting interceptions. They're getting sacks. Their defense is playing well. They need to be respected. And although I think a letdown is coming soon for them, the Colts just aren't playing well enough for me to say this is the team that gives it to them. But man, with Angela being at home, he has owned the Chiefs in recent years. We all remember that playoff comeback, so I'm not going to put it uh, against the Colts here. They can definitely win this game, but I just can't pick it. I just can't do it. I like the Chiefs to go on the road and beat the Indianapolis Colts. Let's move on to the Oakland Raiders at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And yet again, we have a road team that is slightly better than the team that they're going to. The Raiders have been playing great. You know, they've been playing great. They've been finishing games. And last week was probably their most impressive win, really. You know, in terms of they blew the other team out. However, and the Raiders have proven to be road warriors. No doubt about that. But, man, you have to lose a game on the road. You know, that you just have to do that eventually. They won the last three. You know, they had two straight road games. They won them both. They had a road game last week, and now they have a, another road game this week. Another, this is a second set of back-to-back -back road games. And I just can't buy that they're going to be 4-0. They're going to be successful on both of these back-to-back -back road trips. I can't buy it, and the Bucs are building momentum. Their offense is flowing yet again. Jaquiz Rogers is in thrusting something within this Bucks rushing uh, offense, and this Raiders defense isn't very good. They get interceptions, but not much more than that. But you know what? I like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to upset the Oakland Raiders as the Raiders need to get a little focus once again, need to work on some issues defensively. But then next week, they'll come back and they get a huge divisional match 
to me. So we'll look out for that. But for now, I like to say, Bay Buccaneers to upset the Oakland Raiders. Let's move on to the Seahawks at the Saints. And again, we have, you know, this time we have a, a definitively better team. I think we can all agree the Seahawks are a better team than the Saints, but it's in New Orleans, so we have to account for that. However, I like the Seahawks. You know, the Seahawks, they just came after, they just came out of a brutal game against the Arizona Cardinals on Sunday Night Football. They're pretty beat up, and that's what scares me. But however, you know, they still have a conglomerate of weapons, and Doug Baldwin and Tyler Lockett, who hasn't done anything this year, much to my dismay. I don't know why I drafted Tyler Lockett. What clown I am for thinking this guy can get 1,000 yards this season. I'm a clown. I'm a baboon. Anyway, so I still like Russell Wilson to find enough success. This game will be close, but I think I trust was Russell Wilson and the Seahawks to pull it out because that's just what they do. That's their move. While the Saints can sometimes find ways to lose football games. I'm just going to go with the Seahawks. I think they're more trustworthy here. And they're definitively the better team. So even though it's in New Orleans, I like the Seahawks. Let's move on. Arizona Cardinals at the Carolina Panthers. And again, we have a team that's slightly better going to somewhere where it's dangerous, man. In Carolina, they're not playing well this year. But, however, they just had the bye week last week. And maybe they figure some stuff out. But I can't pick them, okay? The Panthers secondary stinks, and if it continues to stink, they won't do anything. This Cardinals pass rush is legit. It's furious. It's uh, on point. They're going to get after Cam Newton. They're going to hurry Cam Newton. They're going to pressure Cam Newton and force him into some throws he doesn't want to make. The Cardinals defense, if they play as well as they did Sunday night, they should have no problem winning this game, but... I don't know, man. I feel like after that Cardinals loss, they're just a little deflated. Hopefully not. It wasn't a loss. It was a tie. Hopefully not. Uh, We'll see. I'm going to go with the Cardinals, but I really, I'm scared, man. I'm scared, bro. I'm scared. Let's move on to the San Diego Chargers at the Denver Broncos. And I'm picking the Broncos, but again, this is a pick that I'm not confident in. The Chargers, they went on the road, and they defeated a team that defeated the Denver Broncos on the road. Okay, they defeated the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons went to Denver and won. Chargers in any given week, every given week, they are in games. They beat the Broncos two Thursdays ago. It wasn't even close. Okay, this team is so dangerous. They're so good. And picking against them right now is such a dangerous thing. They're going to be in the game. However, I'm going to go with the Denver Broncos to win this game just because I feel like they know they need this game. And they're going to show up, hopefully, for my sake, and win this game. But, man, I'm not sold on this. Another pick I'm not sold on. Let's move on. Green Bay Packers at Atlanta Falcons. And, again, you know, I'm picking the Falcons to win this game. I'm not sold on it because any given week, I'm telling you, Aaron Rodgers is a threat. You know, yes, he's not playing as well as he's played over the last, you know, 16 weeks as he has in his career. But, damn it, he's still good. And he's still a threat to throw for four or five touchdowns in any given week. So I'm not going to do it wholeheartedly, but at the end of the day, this Falcons team, this Falcons passing offense should put up enough points on the Packers to win this game. My only problem is whenever the Falcons think they have an easy matchup, that's when they tend to be a little deflated, not show up as hard as they should be, and and play play well as they should do. But I'm going to roll with them. Hopefully they don't decide this is the week to choke and give up the NFC uh, south to the Bucks because if they lose and the Bucks win, Bucks are on top of the division. Hopefully, this is not the week they decide to do such a thing. But it looks more and more like that might happen eventually. We'll see as the season progresses. But I'm going to pick the Falcons one here. They should be able to move the football against this Packers secondary, which has proven to be bad, just bad this season. Let's move on to the Philadelphia Eagles at the Dallas Cowboys. And, you know, Cowboys fans, they don't like me, and that's fine. Uh, I don't hate your team, uh, despite what you may think. I can see you guys are freaking good. However, I think there's a problem here, and I think it's the same problem the Vikings faced last week. Whenever you're five and zero, oh, the Vikings are five and zero, oh, the Cowboys are five and one, and you have a bye week, it, it kind of loses momentum for you. You know, it kind of takes a little of your momentum away. You're rolling and you're getting hot, and then oh, we have a bye week. We saw the Eagles lose after a bye week when they were three and zero. Oh. We saw the Vikings lose after a bye week when they were five and zero. Oh. I think now we see the Cowboys lose after a bye week now that they're 5-1 and one and they're hosting an Eagles team that, man, they played really well last week in the football game. Their defense is legit. I think they're going to give Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott some issues. I think they're going to pressure Dak Prescott very well. You saw Connor Barwin show up last week for pretty much the first time this season. This Eagles team is tough. 
And don't tell me that it's in Dallas, because as we've seen, being in Dallas doesn't mean diddly poo, okay? They can lose games in Dallas all the time. They do it every year. We saw this team lose to the New York Giants week one. The Giants are worse than the Philadelphia Eagles. So don't tell me the Eagles can't win this game. In fact, I have been winning this game. I like the Eagles to go to Dallas and pick up the victory. And that's finished with Monday Night Football and the Minnesota Vikings at the Chicago Bears. Bears getting back Jay Cutler. I think you all will see that Cutler was better than Brian Hoyer. I mean, yeah, Hoyer didn't throw an interception or something like that, but I mean, Cutler's better. He's just better. Um, but with that said, the Vikings are going to win this game. I mean, they lost the game last week. I tried to tell you. I tried to warn you. I tried to tell you, hey, look, guys, the Vikings are going to lose this game. Listen to me now. The Vikings are going to win this game. It should be pretty easy. It should be. All right, so with that said, let's move on to my Garandam tease of the week. Last week, I went three and two with my Garandam tease. I want to have a four and one week again. I want to have a five and oh week for the first time. Hopefully we get that this week. Let's start with the Titans at the, no, no, the, the Jaguars at the Tennessee Titans. And I like the Tennessee Titans to cover the minus three points. Guys, they're better than the Jaguars, man. They're just better. You know, maybe they get a little too confident and they sleep on the Jaguars, but I don't see it happening in this game, maybe later on in the season, but not in this game. Titans want to get it done. Titans will get it done. Minus three, no price to pay. I like the Titans minus three. And also let's stick with this game. Over under is 43.5. I know this appears as if it's going to be a low-scoring matchup because last year it was on Thursday Night Football. It was like 17 or 14 or something like that. But, guys, this is not the same two teams. You know, this is a Titans team that now can put up some points. And the Jaguars, although they have struggled from time to time, Blake Bortles, dumbass, throwing interceptions. I'm sorry, he's a dumbass. That's what he is. Um, throwing interceptions like a clown, like a baboon, like a buffoon. Uh, but I think both these teams are going to put up a good amount of points this game. I have the Titans winning uh, 27 to about 17. It could end up being more than that. I like the over here for the Titans and Jaguars. I really feel like they get over that uh, 43 and a half. And we saw last year the Titans uh, won against the Jacksonville Jaguars 43 to 39. So they can also put up some fireworks. And don't be surprised if that happens. Uh, both these teams, they're just too inconsistent. I like the over here. Okay, so let's move on. To the next matchup, my next Garandam T of the week, and that is the Patriots minus six. Yes, the Bills are playing well this season, but man, LaShawn McCoy may not play, and the Patriots are just dominating folks. They're just going to places, going to Buffalo. They don't care. They're just going to you, and they're blowing you out. That's their move right now. Tom Brady's pissed. You know, he got the suspended for the play game. He doesn't give a fuck right now. He's going to go to Buffalo. He's going to cover this minus six. And I think it'll be done pretty easily. I think you have to ride the Patriots until they show you that you cannot ride them anymore. Let's move on to the Arizona Cardinals plus three. Again, I'm not convinced the Cardinals are going to beat the Panthers, but you're giving me three points. I'm taking it. Okay, give me those three points because even if the Panthers win the game, it'll only be by three points, maybe a little less than that as well. So maybe we can even cover I like the Cardinals plus three. And my final guarantee T of the week. Oh, no, I have, uh, yeah, one more. The final guarantee T of the week, the Philadelphia Eagles. Plus four and a half. Guys, I like the Eagles to win outright. But now you're telling me I get four and a half points? Give me that. Because even if the Cowboys win, I think it's only going to be by four, three, two, or one. So give me the four and a half points. Oh, I love that line. You got to jump on this line. Uh, you got to jump on it. The Eagles may win this game. I think they will win this game. Four and a half points. Oh, give me that. By the way, my record is right now overall 63, 43, and one straight up. Pretty good. Not great, uh, but pretty damn good, honestly. Go look at me compared to some ESPN experts. One, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, against the spread, 51, 54, and 2. Again, against the spread, I'm not great. I'm getting better. I was 10 and 5 against the spread last week. You know, really inching closer and closer to being 500. This year, it's just my feeling against the spread. And then hopefully next year, I, next year I ascend to greatness. Now, that's pretty much the move because I've never done against the spread uh, until this year. And the Garrett Dam T is 15, 16, and 1. Hopefully next week we can get this over 500. So there you go. Those are my NFL Week 8 picks and predictions. Only 13 games this week, but I think they're tough. Uh, hopefully, if I can go 8-5, and five, I'd be happy, man. I'd be happy with 8-5 and five this week. 9-4 and four would be glorious. 10-3. and three would be fantastic. So there you go. What are your predictions? What are your predictions? Comment down below. I want to know if you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and most importantly to subscribe.
Until next time, this is me, MJ, Take On Sports and Entertainment, and I'm out.